no displacement at x equal l. Right? The difference between writing k x minus l and l minus x is physically very obvious. Okay. What's the difference between this and this? Okay. Suppose I I have this I have position at x equal for example 10 centimeter and L is 100 meter or 100 centimeter. Then L minus x is 100 centimeter minus 10 centimeter, that means 90 centimeter. That means I am looking at the wave with respect at x, x equal L. OK? And the kx minus L instead, when I look, when I plug, I mean, when I denote, I mean, when I see the wave at x equal 10 centimeter, then that is minus KL, sorry, minus 90 centimeter. That means I am seeing the displacement the other way around. So I think this is more physically sensible in our situation. It's the easiest way to describe the boundary condition. OK? So I take this form. That is y sine kl minus kx. And I have exponential j omega t minus j omega t exponential. That will satisfy the boundary condition at x equal 0. That means I am oscillating the string with the amplitude y with exponential minus j omega t. And the spatial distribution is like this. And one very important thing we can, we can observe over here is KL. If I rewrite the KL using the relation between k and omega or the k and wavelengths, that essentially means that we are seeing the length scale with respect to wavelengths. So this means now we are seeing the whole wave in positive x-axis with respect to wavelengths. Because kx is 2 pi x over lambda. OK? Now, let's see driving point impedance, in this case, 2, zm0. The force acting on x equals, on the string of x equals 0, that is minus TL dy dx evaluated at x equals 0. So I have to differentiate this with respect to x. Okay, that is what? Uh, y, and I have cosine. Because I am differentiating this function with respect to x, I have k and then minus, they make this one plus k l, right? Because I am evaluating this at x equals 0, this term will be 0. I have cosine KL, and I have exponential minus J 
omega t. What about the velocity? The velocity is the rate of change of displacement by definition. So I have to differentiate this with respect to t and evaluating this at x equals 0. That gives me sine kl. Because I am differentiating this with respect to time, I have minus j omega. OK? And I have exponential minus j omega t. This gives me rather different form than we had for semi-infinite string case. And this is cosine over sine is what? Okay, cotangent KL and I have minus J over here okay and then I have TL over W so I was write the TL over omega, sorry, not W, omega. And what is 1 over minus J? Minus 1 is, oh, sorry, plus 1 is minus 1 multiplied by minus 1, and minus 1 is J square, so 1 over J is J. Right? So I have J over here. So the driving point impedance of a finite string whose length L has different form compared with what we have over here. First, it does not have a real part. It does not have a real part. It has only imaginary part, J. In other words, when I push the string, there is a phase difference of pi over 2. Right? It means that when I m try to move the string, string does not move in phase. String somehow opposed to the movement. Because there is a phase difference of j, the phase difference of pi over 2. OK? OK? I suggest to you guys who could not, cannot understand what I'm talking about, the phase in vibratory system, I suggest to you guys to read the appendix. You know, appendix. Uh, there is a detailed, detailed explanation about the phase in vibratory system. And another one is, it does depend on interesting parameter, that is KL. The so KL is simply measure of length scale with respect to wavelengths. Okay? And also we know that the speed of propagation is proportional to TL over low L and K equal omega over CS then we know that this will be rho L C S. So it's absolute magnitude the same as rho L C S, but different phase and also dependency in space and wavelengths. 